Welcome back to another episode of Get Swifty. My name is Bo, and this time around we're going to recreate a pizza ordering app that I found on Dribble in Swift UI. Let's get to it. So this entire project took me about 70 minutes to complete, but I'll be speeding everything up here and only cutting out things like my lunch break and where my dogs came in to visit me. Originally, I really wanted to do a five apps in five minutes video using this kind of speeding through sort of format. But when I tried speeding them up, it was just too fast to even watch. Uh, maybe when I get to like a thousand subscribers, please subscribe, and I unlock stories, I could try something else with those. So I'm thinking if once I get stories going, I can probably do some quick design videos with those. Now, after finding the design that I want to replicate, I started the project. And then I just restructured the code a little bit from Xcode's original template. You'll notice that I'm just dumping all this code into one file. Uh, at this point of the project, it's completely fine, but later on, you'll see me split it out into other smaller files. This is just to save us the headache of file switching constantly while we get this initial layout put together. After getting the header together, I start working on the filter buttons at the top of the screen, these little round capsules that you can see. I think in the actual design, these are meant to be a horizontally scrolling view. I'm also hard coding a couple of values here, but we can usually switch those out. Now I put those filter views into a scroll view. And now it's time to move on to the options view, which is that large list of tiles of pizzas and there's the little picture of a chef there as well. That picture of a chef gives me a little bit of trouble later on in this episode, but I managed to solve it. I populate the grid with some options. Hard coded of course. Now that I've got the data in there I can start to work on the actual visual design of these cells. And right here I'm just guessing on the corner radius, I don't know. Most of the time I have no clue what I'm doing. I think that's normal. I've been building iOS apps for about 10 years now and every day I still learn something new. The best thing about SwiftUI is you can make adjustments and preview them in almost real time. Well, when Xcode's having a good day that is, but this is definitely one of my favorite ways to do UI development. In UIKit, you can't really afford to bump these numbers up and down because it takes so long to rebuild the app. It's a lot better these days than it used to be, but still, um, you, you kind of had to calculate things in your mind a little bit more carefully than just throwing numbers into a parameter. It's at this point the file that I've been using is getting way too large and unwieldy, so I've decided to split them out into individual files and restructure my project a little bit more. You can see that when I switch out of that main file, the preview window disappears. Um, and so what I end up doing is pinning it. So there's a little button on the bottom left side of that uh, preview window. If you click that, you can pin that window there and it will remain there uh, to, no matter which file you switch to. All right, that's all cleaned up and that home view now just has a couple of lines of code in it. I adjust the layout a little bit more and pushing that uh, header view to the left. And then I spent some time trying to space out these filters a little better. You may have noticed that I don't have the exact same fonts as the design. I could probably find them and download them, but I don't think it really matters for this video. So I got a little bit lazy here with that background and I kept the blue, but just reduced the opacity. It almost looks the same. I think it might be the same. Now to account for these other colors, I just create an array of them and pick one at random. 
here I'm just adding a few more options so that I can start working on the grid layout. And then you'll see that because of that image only tile is smaller than the others, it's supposed to stagger, but it's not doing that. It's just filling in that little spot there. So I jump on Google and try and figure out what I'm doing wrong. And I wrongly assumed that the lazy V grid would just work it out for me, would stagger these cells, and that's not the case at all. So I have to do it myself. After spending quite some time on this, I figured the best approach would be to split the array in two and have two lazy V grids side by side. And the way I did this was incorrect. Um, I grabbed a chunked array, which at first thought uh, it was correct, but um, it wasn't. You see, a chunked array will break up an array into chunks the size of the value you put in. So my array was now a 2D array with two options in each array. But what I really needed was an array divided into two, not many arrays with two items in each. It takes me quite a while to work out what I had done wrong. But that is why you see four options on the screen instead of six. Now I'm just going through Google image search to find some photos of pizzas. Annoyingly, just searching for plain old PNG still returns JPEGs, so eventually I just type in file type colon PNG, and that gets me exactly what I'm after. And I'll grab a picture of a chef, throw that in there. So what I'm trying to do here is put a conditional around this photo only option uh, and change the layout of the cell based on that. This is the part where I struggled the most um, in getting the image to lay out correctly in the right spot because in the design, you can see that the chef's picture, like that cap is outside the cell. And so trying to re replicate that was kind of tricky. So after messing around a little bit with the conditional, I decided that it wasn't working for me and I went ahead and just created an image option cell on its own. It took me a little while to work out exactly where I wanted it to go. Did I want it as a separate struct or did I want it just as another variable inside the uh, regular option cell? So eventually I decided to have two views inside here, which one was a full view, which included all the text and the other one was just an image only view which uh, contain the chef, Im chef images. This made things a lot more cleaner and easier to focus in on what it was I was trying to do. There was a lot of back and forth here with how I wanted to handle the background. It was at this point where I realized if I wanted to get that chef's hat to poke out the top of the cell, I had to set an offset on the image. But now I had this gap at the bottom of the cell. So I thought, hey, maybe I need to do something with this background. I'm really going to increase the speed here because I spent so much time trying to get this right. All right, perfect. But now there's this large gap underneath all these chef photos. But first I want to fix this button because in the design you can see that it spans across the entire bottom of that cell. Now moving back to this gap issue that I've been having, I spent quite a long time on this before realizing that all I really needed to do was add a negative padding to the bottom. 
You can see that I even look on Google for an answer. And of course I find nothing because my search terms are pretty awful. Just a little more tweaking of this layout and it's uh, around about here that I realized that um, I'm not even showing the array correctly. So I've got five options in that list and I've only got four showing up on the screen, so. I finally work out that it's not a chunked array that I'm after, it's a split array. So that works, but I think I have them backwards. I just flip them back around, so we've got left on that side and right on the other. And it seems to flow perfectly. I have a play around with adding a few more items. Let's see how that looks. And I'm actually really quite happy with how it's turned out. Um, ideally we'd have the correct fonts, but that's about it really. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining us. And if there's any other apps you'd like to see me recreate in Swift UI, please let me know in the comments. Until next time.